All you have to do to persuade someone is do two simple things. One, you have to identify, and ideally, the first step you're going to do is you're going to identify the buying state. One. And two is you're going to anchor it, anchor that state to your product. Now, ideally, right, I wouldn't just push it that fast, right, because their strategy may be to have more information. But once I've identified that state and can set it off consistently, can I get this person to attend the seminar, yes or no? Yes. There's absolutely no doubt. It's just like Ivan Pavlov and the dogs. See, a lot of people go out and they teach sales persuasion. They go, say this and do that and say this and do that and say do this. Hey, that's all garbage. Here's what you do to be able to do this. These two pieces. Now, if you want to see it in the content shape, here's how you persuade. First part of this football field called persuasion is to identify or develop what? Rapport. You've got to develop rapport. You don't walk up and go, hey, baby, do you ever feel like you have pure XC and you ever want to do that again? Come fill out this ticket. That, that won't work real well, right? They're going to go, what are you? And you go, ecstatic. Now, I don't know. They'll just, that, that'll get their attention. I don't know if it'll have the effect you want. The point is, you've got to have rapport. How many of you can develop rapport by matching and mirroring tonality, breathing patterns, gestures, eye movements, anything? Raise your hand. Aha. So we got the first part down. Rapport. Simple. You want people here to say, me too. Me too, not so what? <laughs> right? If you go around and you say, hey, this is, the, this is the most incredible thing. It's like when I did it, it's like I met God right in the center of the coals. And like, I just wanted to just like, you know, feel like I was going on my surfboard down this incredible wave in Maui. And, and, it's, and what are they going to be saying? So what? Because is that what they would do? No, so do you want to tell them all about your experience until you first find out what their experience would be. So you need to find out what their needs are. First thing you got to do is rapport on me too. You got to be like them. See, then when you start to share something, they're going to go, God, if she really believed, if she really had that experience, then hey, I probably would have the same kind of experience. Here's the problem in most persuasion. Person goes out and they're all like this. Hey, hey, this is really great. Hey, you got to go with this thing. It's so fabulous, right? And the other person's in kinesthetic. <laughs> right? And they can't figure out why the guy won't go. And the guy goes, oh, well, maybe next time, Mary. Uh, is that going to be, are you going to be effective in your persuasion there? No way, because you blew it right up front. You're not putting them in a state, before you can put them in a state, one well, first thing you need to do is have rapport. So when you're talking to that person, you don't want to be over and come by and kick them in the face and go, God, it's such a fabulous seminar, I mean, you can do anything you want in it. And that, that doesn't work. What you've got to be able to do is enter their world. And in entering their world, say, you know, if there's anything at all you could have in your life right now, what would that be? The person goes, I don't know. If, if you didn't know, what would it be? Oh, God, if I could just, if I could just feel like, you know, my relationship with my wife could work, you know? People will tell you that kind of stuff when you have rapport, won't they? How many people have discovered that? They'll tell you stuff they won't tell anybody else. I was in Jerry West's office the other day. I was real excited. He's my, my hero, a basketball player, some of you know, probably the greatest guard that ever played. And I, I had to spend two hours with him. And Rick Green was with me, and we were both kind of laughing and looking at each other back and forth because he kept saying, God, I never heard anybody tell anybody this stuff. But, you know, and he could tell us more stuff. Why do you do that? Because we had rapport, right? We had total rapport. My point is, you say something like that, and someone says, well, you know, I, God, I don't know. I just wish that my self-image would change. See, once they tell you all those things, what have you identified? Their needs. Now, do you have enough information, you know, idea, general idea about how these seminar principles like anchoring and rapport and knowing what you want and turning resistance into assistance and love strategies, do you have enough information there to affect just about anything any human being wants? You better believe it. So all you got to do is find out what that is and then find out, well, what would it be like if that relationship totally did work? Well, it would be fabulous. I mean, would it be really fabulous? They go, yeah. Or you can give them a certain look. You don't have to make the sound, right, as long as you duplicate it exactly. Or if you're friends, right, and you're sitting next to you, would it really be fabulous? You know, if you're sitting next to them, you don't have to reach across the room and slap them. You just touch them, right? Some people get really carried away with their anchors. They think they got to go up and go, right? you don't have to do that to anchor somebody, right? All you got to do is just go, what would really be it, right? You know, or they're sitting next to you like that, like that lady's anchoring her right now in laughter. Right? right try it. Try it again. Watch what happens. <laughs> See? See, she still smiles, still laughs. My point very simply is this. That if you ask somebody like that, and you can find a human's needs, what they really want and they need, and they only tell you that at first you've got what? Rapport. So here you're identifying. You're getting rapport, right? And you're finding out simultaneously. You want to find out what it is. Find out what it is that they need. Find out. 
If you, if you had, if you could change anything in your life right now, what would you change? Oh, I like it all the way it is. Well, if you could make anything better, what would you make better? Well, nothing. Oh, so you're just going to stay like you are now then, forever. Well, no, I won't be like I am now forever. Well, if it could be better, how would it be better? Most people will tell you, you don't have to go through all this stuff with them. They'll go, well, I don't know, I really like it. I say, well, you know, if something could be a little bit better, what would it be? I say, well, you know, I'm, I'd like to be able to earn more money. Well, what would it take for you to be able to earn more money in your business? Well, I don't know, I, I, if I could learn to persuade more, and, or if I could learn to, you know, build rapport with my boss, you know. See, what have you identified? Real specific needs. Say, let me ask you a question. If you could go spend uh, a few hours with someone who was an absolute master in that area of human communication, relationships, business, whatever it could be, if you could spend that and by the end of that time have the skill to be able to change that right away and the support to do it too, would it be worth taking some time and some energy and some capital to do? Would it be worth it? I mean, to get all that you want for the rest of your life or to get this particular thing, would that be worth it? So you've got to be able to what we call close someone, right? You've got to be able to get them to make a what? Decision and more importantly, a commitment. Because see, people, the, the normal approach to human beings is they will just put things off. People put things off. That's a normal approach. So what you got to do is get them to commit. And some people, when they start to do that, if, you, if all of a sudden you change your physiology and you go, so what would it be worth if you were going to do that and this and that? Are you going to be able to have this person be persuaded? No, because are you in rapport anymore? Biggest problem in persuasion is guys got rapport the whole time, right? And then they go to ask for the money. And what happens? <laughs> Well, uh, um, I got this seminar, huh? Uh, would you uh, uh, maybe like to go? Is that how you do it? No, you're just as congruent. You're going, you've got to go to this thing. It'll give you that answer, and it's well worth it. Here, fill this thing out. But I don't have the money. Put on a mass charge or a visa. Whatever it takes, you've got to go. Right? So you go, but, 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 but. You just go, what do you mean? Bottom line is, what you've got to do is you've got to go to this thing. Do you want to continue to live this way with this thing happening in your life? Well, no. Do you want to change it? Yes. And you've got to go. Here, write a check. Don't mount it too high. <laughs> Whatever it takes. See, congruency will do it. If you have that congruency and if you fill their needs, you'll do it. But you've got to have rapport and you've got to find out what they need. The next piece here is, in this persuasion piece, is sometimes you've got to give people a certain amount of logic and reason. But notice, if this was a football field, 40 yards of the football field is identification rapport. Getting rapport, so the saying, me too, not so what? Finding out what their needs are and having them like you personally and think you're like them. That way, when you say it's worth it, will they believe you? Yes. But if you're in a different kind of person, will they believe you? No, they're going to go, well, they like it because they're different. But if you're like them and, they, and you like it, they're going to go, well, they like it, they're like me. Ah, okay. So logic and reason is the second part. And that is, notice that's maybe 10 yards of the football field. 10 yards meaning that you're just going to give them a few details. You know, it's $125. Well worth every piece. It'll be at this place. Get a pencil. Write this down. Write down so-and-so address. Da -da -da -da. Do you ask him, do you want to go? No, of course you don't want to ask him that. You assume the sale. If you found somebody's needs and you fill it, do you have the right to assume the sale? You better believe it. In fact, if you don't, you're not showing any personal power or any respect for that individual. If they have a true need and you know you can fill it and you don't, then you not only have you not add any value, but you've probably taken some away because you got them to remember the things they don't like in their life. See, what you want to do is get them to be clear on what it is that they can improve their life and then show them how to do it right away. So the bottom line is that you say, here's what it is, and the way to give logic and reason is go, write this down, grab a pencil, come on. You've got to have that kind of congruency. And if you have rapport, can you say, write this down? Will people respond if you have rapport? Oh, yes. If you don't have rapport, it won't work. Rapport is the presupposition for all this effectiveness. So you say, write this down. It's okay. It's on March 22nd. Or, yeah, that's right, March 22nd. Here's where it is. Write this down. It's this location. And as they're writing it down, they're already beginning to unconsciously begin to what? Commit to being there. So you give them the logic and reason. The next piece is called attack and confess. Attack and confess. Part of the persuasive process. You must attack and confess. That is, there are a couple things that come up for human beings in any human transaction. That is, getting humans to do anything, buy things, go places, do things, these are basically three major objections you'll hear in your lifetime. Number one, I don't have enough what? Time. time. Right? In most cases, you're going to hear, I don't have enough time, because people don't like to admit they don't have what? Money. So they go, I'm busy, I don't have enough time, right? So the bottom line is, that's one. The second one here is, I don't have enough money. And the, and the real reason why people don't do things is they don't believe it's worth it, which simply means that you haven't tapped their strategy. You haven't put, and tapping the strategy means you haven't put them in a state where they would feel, 
how you'd want them to feel or how they'd want to feel in order to go. See, if someone says, I don't believe I should go to this thing, I don't think it's worthwhile. Well, if you did believe it was worthwhile, how would you feel? What would happen if you right now, all of a sudden, instantly you changed and instantly you started to think, hey, this is really worthwhile. If you were to do that right now, what would have changed? What are you talking about? Just think for a second. What if this thing was totally worthwhile? What if this thing was worth every ounce, every penny, every time, every amount of energy that you would invest in it and it would come back tenfold? Would you want to go then? And they go, well, yeah, of course. What have you done just now by using that set of language patterns? In order to understand you, they had to process that, didn't they? In order to process that, it's like saying, don't spill the milk. In order not to spill the milk, you got to process what spilling the milk's like. So if you say to them, what would it be like if all of a sudden, instantly, you change? What am I also doing? Embedded commands. I'm saying, all of a sudden, you change, and you believe it was worthwhile. And all of a sudden, you start to think about all the areas in your life where it would be worthwhile. What would it be like then? What if you went to this thing, and as a result, your relationships are working perfectly? Would it be worth it then? Well, yeah. Fill out the card. See? But you must do it while they're in state. If they're out of state, you're not going to have it. It's like the example I gave, I think, last week, right? If you go into a, a place to get some food, and the waiter or waitress comes by, and they slam down their thing, ticket and say, here's your menu, what do you want? Is that person like that all the time? Is that the time to say to them, I don't like the service here? No, that's absolutely not the time. Will that get your outcome at all? Absolutely not. What you have to do in that case is realize that you need to put that person in a state if you want to get some good service. And that you're responsible because you're a professional communicator. See, uh, not long ago, one of my staff came in and said, you know, you blew up on me in this place. And I did. I blew up one time. I was in a state of just, <laughs> and I apologized for it. I said, I didn't apologize, right? He goes, yeah. He said, but you know, I feel like that happens a lot. I said, well, I'm in that state sometimes. You've got to be ready for it. <laughs> I said, that's not the time to come in and ask me, do you want to do this? Or you shouldn't do that when I'm in a state of this is what's going to happen. See, that's not the time, right? You just watch my physiology or you use a phrase to change my state. You go, Robbins, you know, I like this thing about it. Or I think this is great. Or I, you go, remember that time when this happened? Or you change my state, you change my physiology. By doing that, you're going to have a chance to be able to communicate it to me. And I'm not going to respond in a negative way. I'll respond in a positive way. But you got that sensory acuity. Same thing with a waitress, right? You want to change your physiology, change your state, and then you can get great service. How do you change somebody's state? What are your choices? Quickly. Pattern interrupt. Pattern interrupt. Pattern what else? Mirror. Metaphor. You can mirror their state and take them out. You can change their physiology by doing anything. Changing physiology is the first key, right? Or you can ask them something that makes them process differently. Or you can say something. Instead of responding the way most people do, you go, God, they must be working your tail off here. You know, I, I, you know take your time with us. Will that change somebody's state? Now, how will they, will they respond to you differently? Oh, absolutely, because you've changed their internal feeling. And when you change their internal feeling, whole new set of behaviors. So the key to sales is put them in the state where they've bought before. And then while they're in that state, either anchor it or you know, expose your product while you talk about it. Remember that thing you absolutely love? That's what this is. But if you go, here's what I love, this is what you should do, will that work? No. You've got to make sure it's something they want, they need, some of the time when they knew it was right. If you want to see another awesome young Tony Robbins clip, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.